Good morning, internet friends. In this video, I'm going to tell you the story about how I helped with this Kickstarter campaign that got over 300% funded before I even got the chance to make this video and tell you about it. The purpose of this campaign is to get an injection mold and make hundreds of these little FPV wings and sell them to whoever wants one. It all started about two years ago when I was down in Southern California hanging out with Kevin from the YouTube channel ThinkFlight. He was working on a project that he called the Friendly Neighborhood Drone. It was a tiny 170 gram flying wing with a 400 millimeter or 16 inch wingspan. He had it set up with an RDU Pilot flight controller that enabled it to be fully autonomous from launch to landing. When I saw this plane for the first time, I was blown away by how small it was and thought it might make a fun little FPV platform. Kevin sent me home with an airframe and I built it out with an analog FPV transmitter, a 4K recording camera, and an RFD 900U radio module for control and telemetry. I was running it on two 18350 lithium ion cells in series. This plane flew, but for some reason I was never really able to get it flying super well. I think this was probably due to a mixture of poor tuning and incorrect center of gravity. It was still tail heavy even with the battery slid all the way forward. Later on, I tried it with some heavier 18650 cells to add more weight in the nose. With these, it flew a bit better, and I was able to tune it well enough to return to home and orbit the home position all on its own. With this heavier battery and tiny wing area, its cruise speed was 20 meters per second, or 45 miles an hour. That's super fast for such a small plane. Despite getting it working decently well, I wanted to make a version with a longer nose so that it was easier to get the center of gravity further forward. I drew up the new version in CAD and CNC cut it out of pink insulation foam on my Stepcraft M1000. I cut two of these airframes and sent them to Cavan, and then he built them up and sent one back to me. I installed the DJI 03 FPV system in mine. The 03 would allow me to pilot the plane via an HD FPV video link and record stabilized 4K footage, all in one unit. The only problem was, the plane didn't fly very well. I think this was partially because I started with bad PID gains in the flight controller, and the plane probably had a borderline too high of a wing loading. I'm still not entirely sure, but for whatever reason, I just didn't have much luck with it. Since I wasn't having much luck with these 400mm wings, I convinced Kevin we should scale the plane up by 20% to make its flight characteristics a little more forgiving. And he said okay, so that's what I did. And then I cut this version out of EPP foam on the CNC machine. To cut the whole plane, you have to do a two-sided milling operation, where the machine does one side, and then you flip it over to do the other side. That flip is the tricky part. And I finished off some of the finer detail with an 8th inch ball nose end mill. And of course, I used my 3D printed cyclone separator to collect all the trimmings. After making two of these airframes, I once again mailed them to Kevin, and he built them up and sent one back to me. Just beautiful. And here you can see the 20% size increase compared to the older one. Then I moved the O3 over to the new airframe and took it out to the field. After a few failed launches and a little PID adjustment, I got it up in the air. I was trying to launch it in fly-by-wire A mode at first, but eventually figured out that it flew super well in manual mode, so from that point on I just launched it in manual. There were two gotchas with the RDU pilot tuning for this one. The first was due to the fact that I tried to fly it before connecting a GPS to the flight controller. Because of this, the autopilot was stuck in some sort of a landing or takeoff mode that had a 5 degree roll limit. It took me a while to figure out that this was just due to the lack of a GPS and not just the stabilization settings like I thought it was. The second gotcha was that the pitch and roll P terms had to be lowered below the lowest value that RDU pilot lets you do in the basic tuning screen. So to get them low enough to prevent the plane from oscillating, you have to adjust the parameters via the full parameter list. After getting all these issues figured out, it flew like a champ. And it's so much fun to fly with FPV. You feel like the pilot of a matchbox sized fighter jet, and the park is your battleground. And since this thing weighs under 250 grams and has the motor in the back, it's super safe. You could crash it into the back of your own head and you might not hardly realize it. That's why Kevin originally called it the Friendly Neighborhood Drone. And now with this 20% larger version, it has a lighter wing loading and has the ability to fly even more slowly. But if you want to go faster, you can still load it down with some 18650 cells to increase the wing loading. But for shooting gaps at the park like this, I like to fly it with two little 18350 batteries and cruise nice and slow. The video you're watching now is recorded on the O3. It's also sending the video back to my FPV goggles, and it's acting as the RC remote control link as well. It outputs an S-Bus signal that goes into the flight controller. Kevin built up this plane with a 1206 brushless motor and a 3-inch three 3-bladed three propeller. One big challenge of using the DJI 03 in a little airplane like this is heat management. The thing overheats really easily. After powering it on, you can't wait around for very long before taking off, and you need to mount it in a spot with lots of airflow. Kevin mounted his in the top hatch, which worked out pretty well. My install was a lot less clean. I had it just sitting in the base of the fuselage and ended up having to fly without the hatch for extra airflow. But for my next build, I'm going to either put it up in the hatch or down in the floor with the bottom sticking out. 
For our CNC machined prototypes, I had these air intakes in the front, but realized that it wasn't really worth having them there since it makes the nose a lot less durable. After a few crashes, I got a crack in the nose and had to Gorilla Glue it shut, but the final injection molded EPP version will be a lot more durable than the CNC EPP version, especially now that there are no air intake slots in the front. I added a NACA duct to the hatch, so that should pull in enough air to keep the electronics cool. Definitely not enough to keep the O3 cool though. That thing needs to be partially exposed to the outside airflow. A lot of people have been asking if this plane is compatible with other FPV systems, like Woxnail or HD0, and my response is, if you have an X-Acto knife and a little creativity, you can make just about anything work, as long as it doesn't weigh too much. I'm just using the O3 because of the gyro-stabilized 4K recorded video. This plane might be borderline too small to fit both an HD FPV system and an action camera like the Insta360 GO, but you could probably pull it off if you kept everything else really light, but I'm not really sure. This CNC cut airframe didn't last me long enough to do much heavy payload testing. Lately, there's been a lot of talk about remote ID and the FAA cracking down on drone regulations, so for this reason, I think sub-250 gram drones are going to become much more popular. You don't need to register them, and they don't need to be carrying a remote ID module on board. Yet, they can still be very capable of some epic flights. This plane has plenty of endurance and range to make it to the tops of mountain peaks for cliff diving and long-range flights and all that good stuff. We still aren't sure what the flight time and speed capabilities will be like, since the injection molded versions will likely be different than our CNC cut prototype versions, but I'm expecting them to be a good bit better. And drone technology is only getting better and better, so in the coming years we'll have smaller and lighter FPV systems and flight controllers that will allow us to use bigger batteries and get even better performance. I've had a ton of fun flying this prototype over the last few weeks and can't wait to get one of the injection molded ones up in the air. Right now I'm finishing up the final CAD model and then we'll send it off to the factory so that they can start designing the injection mold. If you think you might be interested in this plane, you can head over to the Kickstarter campaign to check it out. We're offering two different options. One is the bare airframe alone, and the other is the airframe plus servos, motor, propeller, and ESC. We don't know the exact specs of the included parts yet, but we'll post updates as the project progresses. If you want to buy one, you can support the Kickstarter or just wait to buy one from the website later on. Big thanks to everyone who has contributed so far. To get my flick wing to the field, I 3D printed this holder that snaps right onto the back of my brand new Himaway Cobra Pro e-bike. This thing has been such a great way to get around town. I hardly ever need to drive my car anymore. The fat tires and plush suspension make it feel more like a motorcycle than anything. The 1000 watt mid-drive motor has plenty of power to get me up even the steepest of hills. I took this thing to the bike park to give it a good shakedown. Due to the extra weight of the battery, it was very stable in the air. The fat tires have more grip than any bike I've ever ridden. Maybe it's not the most efficient option, but that's okay, because it has a motor. You could totally take this thing on some nice mellow mountain bike trails and have a great time, but maybe try and avoid hitting the 8 foot drop offs, because I may have blown out the front fork seal. Anyways, check it out at the link in the description if you're interested. On this day, Ansel busted out his Cine Lifter drone with the Freefly Ember high speed camera on it. That allowed us to get these 5K 600 frame per second air to air shots. This sort of thing was impossible before the Ember, because it was the first camera that can record high speed 5K continuously until the 4TB memory is full. That makes it perfect for use on an FPV drone. These air-to-air -air shots turned out pretty cool, but then the Cine Lifter got a bit too close and ate the flick wing. And that was the end of my CNC cut prototype. I'm itching to get another flick wing up in the air, so hopefully the mold making process goes quickly. I'll leave you with some more onboard footage from the flick wing. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.